a massive asteroid striking the Earth would wipe out continents and evaporate oceans. We've been warned about this over again. We've even had surprise asteroid impacts uh, careening towards the Earth, even though they were supposed to be safely passing us by. We've had surprise asteroid meteor strikes that we have never seen recently, and they were coming in not as single events, but at least binary. One recent one was something we never expected, the Chelyabinsk meteor strike. And that same day we had another one over the United States. And no one saw those coming. Now, most of the tracking systems say that they're tracking bodies that are over three to 400 feet in diameter. But even the smaller ones are enough to be what they're called city killers. And recently, because of the fact that one of the asteroids 30 feet across was supposed to pass us by very safely at a distance further than our moon is, that same asteroid came and impacted over the Caribbean. And the astronomers were scrambling to explain to us it had to do with something called the Yarovsky effect, Yarkovsky effect, sorry. It's an effect where the rays of the sun, the heat from the sun's rays, change the temperature of the celestial body, causing it to tumble and rotate. And not only to rotate or tumble and change its trajectory, but many times these bodies split up into other ast and to at least binary asteroids, if not groups of asteroids. So this is something new that we've all been educated to because of what happened recently a couple of days ago when the asteroid struck over the Caribbean. And uh, this is what they're explaining can happen. If you look at the video before this one, I explain as to what can happen in the video title Asteroid Impacts Strike in Groups. The hottest temperatures on Earth recorded half as hot as the sun. And they do come at least in groups, binary and more. So this is uh, also we've not, we have a tremendous amount of scars on our Earth from celestial impacts. They couldn't be anything else because they are, of course, confirmed to be so because of the crystals, the minerals that are examined that uh, are created at the heat of an impact. But the impact also does other things. It boils the earth, it boils the atmosphere, it evaporates the water bodies, it causes earthquakes, it fractures tectonic plates, it creates volcanic activity, it changes the makeup, the, it creates toxic waters, toxic airs, and the list just goes on. One example of a recent volcanic eruption, the Tobe eruption 74,000 years ago, created such an extinction level event that they estimate at least 90% of all living things were um, became extinct from that because of the nuclear volcanic winter, the ash clouds, the temperature differences, the weather, the environment, toxic poisoning of the water in the air. And they estimated that only 10% of humanity survived. It was what they, the anthropologists called bottlenecking. Bottlenecking of the humans. In other words, just a few passed and survived. That's astonishing. Where did they find water and food when everything was covered by ash and everything they could find was poisoned? Now this is by Katie Weston on Express UK. There's a video embedded here with the horrific footage showing what is involved with a massive asteroid impacting our Earth, hitting, for example, the Pacific Ocean. It's a computer simulation. It's a simulation, it's not real, it's just a simulation. 
but it shows how continents would be wiped out and uh, would be causing huge explosions. A small asteroid, as we know, recently shot towards Earth at about 15 kilometers per second, and NASA admitted it did not know it was coming. The incident reiterated the need that we have to ha have a closer look at the sky in case something massive comes hurtling towards our planet. So this terrifying computer simulation footage created by Discovery Channel for the documentary series titled Miracle Planet, it was back in 2008, it demonstrates what a celestial body impacting our Earth would do if it was massive enough. The video formed with the scientific advice of geophysicists and it shows the simulated asteroid traveling at a slow speed due to its large size before it hit the Pacific Ocean. The footage of the scenario says a massive asteroid from space heads straight for Earth as large as the one that impacted over four billion years ago. This computer simulation has been made with the scientific advice of geophysical experts to show the effects if the impact were to happen today. The asteroid diameter is larger than the main island of Japan. Even though it's moving at over 720,000 kilometers an hour, that's almost 450,000 miles an hour, the asteroid appears eerily slow because of its size. The actual impact happens in the Pacific Ocean in the simulation, which is just under a thousand miles south of Japan. That's where the impact in the simulation supposedly occurs. Huge chunks of debris the size of city blocks are hurled into the air. Shattering remains are hurled out into space, way beyond our atmosphere, to bombard the Earth again with deadly intent when they re-enter Earth's atmosphere. Of 7,000 meters, or 23,000 feet, of the rim of the coaster is higher than many mountains on Earth today. The size of the crater would be the distance of 2,500 miles, and this is just the beginning of all things. Brown University Dr. Peter Schultz explains when an asteroid hits the surface of the Earth, the material is heated up to temperatures that get to the point of much well, hotter than half the, the heat of the sun. It's 4,000 degrees to 6,000 degrees centigrade. This is as hot as the surface of the sun. Okay. When the impact hits, it's not just the crater that forms. It's not just the area where the impact occurred. It's all the heating that's creating in the atmosphere and around it, so heat really is the killer. Towards the start of the episode, they say, you have a 500 kilometer object moving at 20 kilometers per second, stopping in 20 seconds, delivering all of its energy in doing so. The amount of energy that's released in this event is more in than enough to evaporate the world's oceans. Everything. Because of the heat. Everything will dry up. Meanwhile, real life, in real life events, a 3 meter wide space rock known as 219MO, there we go, that's the one that was supposed to fly safely beyond the moon. 219MO exploded when it hit the planet's atmosphere on July 22nd above the Caribbean, but the way it approached unexpectedly reaffirms the need for us to have more eyes on our skies. Now NASA said when first spotted 219 MO was about 310,000 miles or 500,000 kilometers from Earth, farther out than the orbit of our moon. This was roughly the equivalent of spotting something that says a gnat from a distance of 310 miles. David Farnaccia, scientist at NASA Center for Near Earth Objects, NEOs, said asteroids this size are far smaller than what we're tasked to track. So if they're so small, they would not survive passing through our atmosphere to cause damage to Earth's surface, he says. But the problem was, as NASA said, the space agency could not determine where 
the space rock was heading. NASA said the body had been spotted only four times in just under half an hour, which was not enough information to determine where this object came from or exactly where it was headed. Uh, that's why they're asking for volunteers to help examine the images of the sky images that NASA takes. It cannot possibly have enough employees to do so and the artificial intelligence that they have just can't make heads or tails of what it's looking at. Uh, whereas human eyes can pick up movement very nicely. They're asking for volunteers. It, you don't get paid for this, but you may be able to somehow help save our planet and everything living on it uh, if you do find something that could be very dangerous to our planet. It's, a, it's in effect the planetary defense system. So if you want a hobby, go give your name, get in touch with NASA, say, okay, I'll be a part of it. And then what they do is they send you sets of images and little uh, gifts, little, little uh, videos of whatever they, their telescopes get. And you have to look at them closely to see, have you found any changes in the sky? Have you found any movements in a few minutes or a few hours? And then you have to report it. So uh, they can't possibly have enough employees. And this is just, I think it's a fantastic hobby for someone who wants to do something very, very creative. Even though you, do, you may not find anything, at least you know you're trying to help. So um, that's what happened. Now, just last month also, the European Space Agency said it also missed a near-Earth object. Recently, calling for better asteroid watch, on July 25th, a huge asteroid, which was roughly the size of a football field, skimmed our Earth, and scientists were not aware that it was coming at us. The asteroid is, was 2019 OK when it was first discovered, and it was not classed as near-Earth asteroid. But the European Space Agency, the ESA, confirmed scientists had only noticed it was traveling near Earth just days before it whizzed past us at a distance of only 40,000 miles. That's one-fifth of the distance to the moon. That's how close it was to us. ESA stated the 100-meter wide, that's 300-foot asteroid, dubbed 219 OK, was detected just days before it passed our Earth although archival records from Sky Survey show it had previously been observed, but was not recognized as a near-Earth asteroid. So, they didn't think it would be coming that close. What happened? Well, obviously it has to do with the Yarkovsky effect, making them tumble and turn, and our gravity pulls them in towards us. They said, we know of and are tracking thousands of asteroids in the solar system, so why was this one discovered so late? Unfortunately, there is currently no single obvious reason apart from its slow motion in the sky before close approach. 2019 OK also travels in a highly elliptical orbit, taking it from within the orbit of Venus to well beyond that of Mars, and it means the time it spends near Earth is and is detected, detectable with current telescope capabilities is very short. ESA and NASA and other agencies and organizations worldwide Professionals and amateurs discover new asteroids every day. This work constantly increases our understanding of the number, distribution, movements of the celestial bodies. And as we said, it's the Yarkovsky effect changing basically everything. So even though they say near Earth and not, not dangerous, obviously uh, that's not true. It may be static for the time that they had reported to us, but in the meantime, because of the Yarkovsky effect of the sun's rays heating the, the, the uh, surface of the celestial body, perhaps even breaking it up into pieces, binary or groups, as we read in the previous video, that happens as well. It could bust it up and it could break up into pieces. And then each one has its own trajectory. Anyway, it changes everything. Um, so... They may be, at that point in time that they're being reported, they may be uh, uh, safely passing Earth, but that may change because of the effect of sun's heat on the surface of the celestial body, changing the trajectory, making it tumble on its axis, 
break up, uh, split up into binary or a very a group of pieces, and coming in at us because of our, of the gravity they have being pulled into Earth. So that's where they are. You never know. That's why so many of us of them lately have been reaching us without the space agencies realizing that they were coming in. And that's why we have the need for asteroid missions. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.